Hola. We will start just because it's going to be archive content too. So we'll see if people start joining us. But we're going to be checking in with Kristen Matlock today. Having some fun with her. She's got a lot to talk about. It'll be cool to catch up with her because we haven't caught up with her since I think even before she went to Dakar maybe. So we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, it looks like some people are signing on. Hi there, guys. Let's see. Oh, hi, Stacy. We got to wait for uh, Kristen to jump on. So, hi, guys. Glad you guys are joining us. Don't forget to check out the badass forklift in the background. Woo wee. Uh, so, we'll wait for uh, Kristen to jump on here real quick and then we'll start talking with her. Today, we're at the uh, IMG shop, also known as Dirt Life Studios. But uh, today, we're just hanging out over here. What's up, Eric? How are you, bud? Sorry, Stacy. I would let you come on, but we got to wait for Kristen. Lance, what's up, dude? Uh, once Kristen jumps on, uh, we'll have a little bit of fun. You guys should comment in, though, and ask any questions that you want. We got uh, a bunch of user-submitted questions right here that we're going to ask her. But uh, if you guys have any questions, jump on and, and ask. Shoot, even if it's archived later on, comment down below. Come out to Spokane. I don't know. Spokane's pretty far, dude. Plus, we all know I don't get along with the cold. Kristen is watching. I don't know. Is Kristen watching? Tell James what's up. James already took off, dude. He had to go dig ditches at his house. Let's see. There we go. Kristen is on here. We'll just wait till Kristen uh, submits and tries to join the conversation here. I'm telling you guys, look at that freaking forklift. Let me get out of the way. You guys can see it. How sick is that thing? Dude, the whole thing is all done up. It's pretty rad, right? We can't show you guys uh, the car that's right behind me here. It's a no-show zone, but you can look at all these cars. Shark mouth, yeah, totally. What's up, Riley? Dude, Riley, did you get to drive that bad boy yet? Thing is so rad. I'll give Kristen a minute to jump on. You guys can shoot questions over right now too if you want. Here, we're about to send Chris an actual request. So, there we go. I guess I got to send the request these days. <laughs> I kept asking. I think you were denying me. <laughs> Was I? I don't know. It wasn't letting me in. Hey, Can maybe it's this bad boy. I, this this guy's got a mind of his own back here. Can you see it? The forklift? Yeah. Oh, nice. That Dude, looks that like some is... pink. <laughs> Dude, it's so crazy, right? Hey, Kristen. So how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Thanks. Um, we already had a bunch of people joining and, and hanging out, but uh, I think uh, one person already said, uh, MTR, where are we at? We're at IMG Motorsports right now, and Kristen, I think, is uh, over there at her shop, right? I'm actually in my office. Oh, in home. your office? Right mm -hmm. on. <laughs> I can't see your face too good or the screen because I got all the comments popping up, but all right. Yeah. So... We haven't talked, I think, since, dude, before Dakar, probably, huh? Yeah, that's what I was trying to remember. I think, I don't think I've been on the show since we got back. So we have a lot to talk about. Dude, for real, right? So <laughs> it, we had a whole bunch of users submit questions and stuff. And one of them was uh, to ask about, like, your Dakar experience. So let's just start there. Because, honestly, I was so jealous when I saw you guys. Although, not uh, having the best flight back and forth didn't look fun at all. <laughs> No, that was pretty sketchy for sure. Um, yeah, we had a great time. It was an experience for for sure. Um, like I said, the flight over there, we uh, ended up over the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, halfway between New York and France, Paris. And uh, yeah, they let us know that one of our engines uh, went dead on us. So we had one left and had to head north to Iceland to spend the night instead of continuing on because it was closer. So that was a little is bit that, scary. 
yeah, is that sketchy when you only have one engine? Yeah, because you know what happens when you lose the next one. <laughs> I just wasn't sure if one engine could handle that big plane. It was one of the Airbuses, you know, it was a huge plane. So oh, I've never been massive ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many people were on board, but there's a, a bunch of people and we all ended up uh, sleeping on the Iceland uh, airport floor and chairs and whatnot just in the airport because with COVID involved, we couldn't leave to go get a hotel or anything because then oh, we'd have right. for a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. So we just had to fight through it and they sent another plane for us the next day and we continued on. Dude, like all the way across the globe, and you're you're like, oh my god, I don't want to get on another plane. <laughs> right? Yeah. At one point, we're like, yeah, we'll just get shipped back, you know, with the race cars. We'll just end up coming back home in April with the cars. <laughs> we were over <laughs> at that point. Dude, I could only imagine. Well, you had a big crew too with you, didn't you? Yeah, there was only let's see, I think nine of us on that flight, but there's a total of thirty of us on the whole team so we just came from different directions yeah so only a few of you guys had to do that that's it sounds i mean like it sounds like it started off kind of rough but dude that experience must have been so cool like looking at all your social posts first of all you did an amazing job on social media like keeping everybody updated thank you yeah i counted the post afterwards all the little stories you know because like you know one video counts as like four little story posts um i ended up doing 600 story posts when i was over Holy there so. crap, are you serious i know i was like hooked on it because everybody was so responsive and really digging it so i just kept it going and yeah before i knew it we were 600 deep <laughs> Holy folks did you tell the players guys well brett carpenter just uh jumped on did you tell him that you got 600 deep <laughs> yeah talked about that today with him it's funny yeah that was that was a lot but it's awesome because it's all archived and you know on my little story bubbles there so anybody can go and check it out even after the fact and even myself will go on there every now and then and just look at it and remember what we went through so it's oh that's cool. such a good idea to put it in there so you can have people check it out and plus since it was your first a car like that or a dakar um that's like my memory that you're never ever going to want to forget Exactly. Yeah. So it's great to be able to look back on all of that. Hey, so we had uh, a comment already come in borderline four by four garage said, are you without the cars for months due to the shipping them? How long does it take to ship them? Yeah, it takes a long time to get them back because you've got customs involved and, you know, it just takes a while to, to get them all to get back. So April, I think is what we're looking at next month. Does uh does that mean like uh that preparation stops on next year's Dakar cars or like what's the I don't know did We're, you guys expect it to be held that long? What's that? Did you guys expect them to be held that long? Yeah, we knew that. And those cars are actually going to be sold and we're building all brand new cars for next year. Oh, okay, cool. So it I guess it doesn't necessarily matter too much except for the people that are buying those cars. Exactly. Yep. So yeah. uh, we had a couple other snack, questions. I, I sent some snacks back, so they might be a little stale by the time they get back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Hey, what did you guys eat over there? Uh, we actually had a chef go with us from Guadalupe Valley where the wineries are down in Mexico. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So that was amazing. He was able to cook what we wanted, you know, over there, stuff that we like. Um, he was limited on his selection because he could buy everything in Saudi Arabia. So, you know, the chicken fajita meal never really worked out for me. But, <laughs> but we had some great food, and even the bivouac didn't have um, that bad of food. You know, I'd heard ahead of time that it was, you know, not very good food in the bivouac. But they must have stepped it up a little bit because I thought it was pretty decent. It looked like like I only saw like most of the meals that I saw was like uh, Brayback. He was posting a bunch about the meals that them, him and the team were eating, and those looked fine. Yeah, it wasn't bad. And they did a lot of pasta dishes and like rice and meats and stuff like that. So stuff that I'm yeah, not stuff used to, to keep you going. <laughs> I'm usually a, a like meat and vegetable kind of girl, so I had to throw some rice and, and pasta meals in there, but it wasn't too bad. 
Well, what, uh, actually that was one of our questions that came through was like, how do you keep fit during those times? Cause you're like pretty avid at working out. So, and keeping in, in shape and stuff when you have to change up the whole program like that, does it really throw you off? Yeah. In the hotel at a time when we first landed, I was able to work out at the hotel gym, but past that, once we got started with the rally, there really wasn't time. And I was spent by the end of the day. You know, I, the last thing I wanted to do was go run around the bivouac and exercise. And so we would be in bed or a lot of times we didn't even finish till dark, you know, so then we go to bed and we were back up by like four or five o'clock in the morning and out on the track, you know, eight, eight thirty. So no time to work out. So, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal because we were definitely getting our workout in the cars each day and probably just the adrenaline rush alone was burning calories. So <laughs> what was your favorite stage? Um, Hmm. They were all a lot of fun, honestly. Um, yeah, they, they just all had a nice variety. There's some beautiful scenery. So probably those stages, you know, where you're just in these canyons and just the walls surrounding you in those canyons are just breathtaking, like kind of like the Utah, What's that? Is it because they're really massive? They're massive. And yeah, I don't know if you saw some of the pictures, but there's some pictures that they took of our race cars. And you can barely tell that our race cars are even in there because we just look like an ant in the photo. Holy cow. Yeah. That just, sounds um, I spent a lot of times looking at the sunset probably when I shouldn't have. <laughs> it was just so gorgeous. Or? Yeah. Yeah. And then just um, like seeing the camels out there, the camels were probably one of my highlights, just wild camels. There's different colors. I thought that they were all tan or brown color, but they have black camels and white camels and all different shades. Dang, that's, do you have blue ones too? You never know. I, I'm sure. <laughs> ones too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it, if I went probably any more days into the rally, I probably would have started seeing colored camels for sure. Just oh my, my head would have. <laughs> I definitely asked about that. Like, how do you kept up your endurance and stuff? But are camels like, uh, I don't know, like cows in the United States? Yeah, pretty much. That's how I would describe them. There's camels out there and then like absolutely no wildlife past that. Um, we saw some baboons actually on the way to, um, um, the very first stage, actually. Yeah, there were some baboons on the side of the highway, and there was a bus parked there, and it kind of looked like they were offloading off the bus. It was kind of funny looking. <laughs> but other than that, I saw like four lizards and a few birds, and that was about it, because it's just so dry. I bet you the boys were all like super wondering about all that stuff, like the animals, and what about those, uh, I don't know what they call them, but they're like... Uh... I don't know, Kuda Mundis or whatever they're called. Do they have that or is that like South Africa? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't see anything like that or hear of anything like that. Just a lot of camels. Uh, <laughs> just camels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Justin commented in saying, uh, will there be a lot of difference uh, in next year's cars? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, we learned a lot over there and weight was a big issue for us. We were about 400 pounds over the competition. So that's huge when, when you're talking about, especially a restricted car, because over at Dakar, they um, require us to be restricted as far as the SSVs go or the UTVs. So once you're restricted and take away the power, if you add extra, that's necessary, then huge difference in the performance of the vehicle, for sure. Oh, will you be racing turbos on the next Dakar? Um, I probably can't disclose much um, information yet because it's going to be a big uh, announcement, of course, you know, get people excited for it. So can't share any details of which car it's going to be. Um, yeah, but, but I'm sure it'll be cool because you guys learned so much. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're. I would say after doing our research, we found that the turbo cars, even restricted, are faster than the naturally aspirated that don't have to be restricted over there. So, so I would guess that we would be turbo, but honestly, I don't even know at this point because things change. Yeah, not to mention that like, there's a lot of, uh, well, 
there's a lot of things that go behind a lot of moving parts that go behind a big team like that. Exactly. Yeah. Players engineers are working hard uh, today, even on trying to determine what our. If you had to take one favorite thing about going over there, was it the sunsets or <laughs> what was it? Uh, just the whole experience, you know, getting to go to a foreign country like that and race and such a big event you know there was 550 entries in the the race you know and that's huge it's the world's uh, largest off-road rally race you know out there so being able to experience that and race it and then actually ending up finishing in the end was just a dream come true yeah i can only imagine what did wayne feel like did he, was he like as amped as you yeah for sure i mean because I'm sure you saw on stage two, I had a little bit of a, an issue there where I flew off yep. of a dune and had to make repairs to the vehicle and it put, put me in a whole different class. Well, he got to stay in the regular class the whole time and ended up 12th. He was the top Polaris Razor finisher out of the whole race. So pretty proud of him, especially being first year, you know, as a, a whole team too. You know, as Polaris Razor, yeah. US first time going over there and mine and Wayne's first time pretty much I think there was only two people on our entire crew that had experience going over there dude it's so cool like I, I I still can't like even tell you how much all that social media meant to me to be able to see that and live that with you guys it was so I like I even got goosebumps when I knew that you were like okay we're heading out to the first stage I was like yes she's getting that total racer like heartbeat going like I was like yeah this is gonna be so cool Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was definitely I had the the jitters going for sure. But uh, once we got started, I was like, okay, we got 5000 miles, you know, let's just do this. So we had a great time. Can't wait till next year. So what, uh, like, since we had that question come in about, uh, like, what your workouts and stuff are, what's the plan like, for you with the, minus the cars for your preparation for next year and maybe Wayne's too? Yeah, it's going to be pretty much the same. I'm going to be training really hard um, pretty much daily. I, I work out. So I actually just bought a couple Pelotons. I got the Peloton bike and treadmill. So because before, I think you probably remember, I was going to Orange Theory every morning. Yeah. Having get up at four o'clock and I was killing an hour of my day going there because it takes me a half hour to get there and a half hour home. So um, yeah, I'm saving an hour by staying home and working out on my Peloton. I do just uh, half my workout on the treadmill and half of it on the bike. And then I'm still going here locally in Alpine where I live to a gym where I do all my weights. So oh, okay, so, so that's your strength training and then your cardio is at home. Yeah, exactly. So I like to do cardio every day. And then the strength training, I just do um, like three days a week, pretty much. Dude, that's pretty cool. What's your, um, that was the specific question that came through. What's your favorite type of workout? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like everything. I used to despise running, but I've gotten actually really good at it on the treadmill. I actually ran for a half hour nonstop um, the other day, and that's the best I've ever done, honestly. Yeah, I used to actually not go to CrossFit classes because I hated the fact that they made us run around the building a few times in the beginning. <laughs> Just to get warmed up. Well, I actually know the person. Her name's Whitney. She was the one that submitted that question, and she is not a fan of cardio, and I'm the exact opposite. I love cardio. Like, that's like my jam is cardio. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's 15% incline, and hill climb for a while like the other five miles of hill climbs and uh, i went up 1500 feet in like 45 minutes so it was pretty cool to <laughs> to do that too something different dude you're and killing it that's pretty good love it it's such a that's that little bit of adrenaline rush that i get off track you know <laughs> brian just commented in cardio sucks all right well, screw me then dude <laughs> uh <laughs> Betsy Anderson just commented in as well and said, will you and Wayne be keeping the same navigators in the next rally? Um, Wayne is going to keep the same navigator and I'm actually changing it up. So um, we haven't announced who it's going to be yet, and but it'll be announced pr probably pretty soon. It's somebody yeah. that... <laughs> it's somebody what? That everybody knows out there. He's oh, a familiar... Cool. Yeah. 
so everybody's going to be pumped for him. So when, uh, so you, well, I just asked, like, what you were going to start prepping for you? Like, you got to get everything start getting ready now, I guess, huh? Like, it's like a huge production to have it all handled for next year. So you guys are going to jump start it now, probably, right? Yeah, the cars are going to start being built uh, within the next week or two is what our our plan is. And and that's in, we're hoping to get the cars done by like August. So then we can just start testing like nonstop. And we'd like to do a couple rally races ahead of time for some training practice type thing. But yeah, in the perfect world, all of that will work out. But we'll see how it goes. We can do it in a shorter amount of time and and you know have the pressure put on us and still pull it off but of course it would be nice to be done earlier this year and maybe uh just rest and relax ahead of time we'll see <laughs> i gotta say like doing like practice for that seems like it would be so hard because the terrain is so much different yeah we found some terrain in sonora um down in mexico that is pretty similar the dunes are um similar if not a little bit bigger honestly they've got some oh. pretty steep there um but yeah we were able to do a lot of dune training there and then um up in like the Pahrump, nevada area there's some good rally training areas there that people have developed some books that we can go off of so we're going to continue to do that and like i said hopefully make it over to um maybe like the moroccan rally or um there's a couple other ones that we're interested in so we'll see if we can pull that off it'll be fun and they don't conflict with any of your uh, score races? No, they don't. It's going to be pretty tight on top of each other because the Baja 1000 this year is a peninsula run. Yep. So that's a lot of time. Um, and we like to stay down there past uh, the race and just spend Thanksgiving down there because it's only taking a couple more days out of the week since we're already taking Thanksgiving off. So we usually just stay down there and enjoy La Paz. But We'll see if we'll be able to do it all. <laughs> We're going to try our hardest. Well, since you're talking about like doing all that enjoyment and having some fun and stuff, the, one of the other questions that we got in was, uh, is it hard to juggle mom life and race life? Um, it's hard, but well worth it. You know, I've got it down pretty good, so I'm pretty scheduled. I just try to, you know, stay on track and just make it all work. You know, it, it's uh, it, it has been a struggle, you know, whenever – teachers throw in like special projects or something like that, that, you know, really um, take home projects or nothing more than just more work for mom. But <laughs> <laughs> and there's so many more take home projects with freaking COVID, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We've been fortunate to have our kids in school still on their normal schedule. They have always done the Monday, Friday homeschool, and then they go to school on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. So they've continued that. Um, they went back after Labor Day next, last year. So, so oh, okay. it's been it's been great for us. Yeah. So I still get my three days a week to get our cabinet shop stuff done. That we still have our custom cabinet company here in San Diego, and then focus on racing. That's awesome. I'm stoked that you guys do that. I still got to tell you, man. I've told you a million times already, but I can't believe that you juggle all that stuff. Like your sleep habits must be way different. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, up at four o'clock every day, and then I'm done by like eight thirty, nine o'clock. You know, I'm, I'm just smoked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Said, the Dukes of Off Road Hazard said hi, Kristen. We're ex excited for Baja. I'm sure you are too. Oh yeah, for sure. He's actually on our team. That's Steve. He's one of our crew guys. So, yeah, I can't wait to get back down there. It seems like it's been a long time because so much has happened since we've been there for the Baja 1000 in November. But yeah, I'm ready to get back down there and have some tacos. Dude, for real, right? Yeah. So Steve must be stoked on that too. Let's see what other questions we got here. Um, what workouts? Oh, do your sons like uh, racing as well? Oh, of course. Yeah, they love it. Oh, no, it. wait. It's, the question was, do her sons like her racing? Oh, um, they do. <laughs> yeah, they did great when I was over at Dakar. I thought it might be more of a struggle than it was. But because of FaceTime, um, I was able to talk to them morning and night, which was actually opposite for them. It was their night and morning at the time. But nope. uh, yeah, being able to do that made all the difference in the world. I think if it was just a phone conversation versus a face-to-face -face thing, then it would have been a lot tougher for sure. But yeah, yeah they have. Cool, 
talk to it. I'm a racer and they get to talk about me at school and <laughs> they're so funny. <laughs> I, the show before, uh, when they were younger, they pretty much seemed like they thought all moms raced or, or all parents raced, you know, because that's just what their mom and dad did. So. <laughs> so, so all of it, they're asking the other kids, they're like, so what kind of race car does your mom drive? <laughs> yeah, what color is your car? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, we got a bunch of people saying hi and, uh, well, bye too. But uh, so <laughs> Wyatt, Wyatt and Clayton are starting to do their own thing too? Yeah, they've been racing for a little bit now. Clayton's in the Players Razor 170 and Wyatt's in the RS1. So uh, they both love it. They actually have their first race back for this season next weekend on Saturday. They're racing locally here. It's called the Dirt Series. And um, um, they usually have them up at Paula um, or Glen Helen. But this one's actually at Brona. Um, it's Dude, a right track. There you too yeah exactly yeah it's right there so it takes us like half hour 45 minutes to get there and so we're just going to go back and forth and uh just make it a quick saturday race for us it sounds like steve's messing with us now he says my mom drives a sick minivan with wood grain interior or wood grain paneling <laughs> <laughs> <Funny. laughs> he's totally so. messing with us uh okay so when well, let's go back to Daca uh, dakar one of our questions was, what was your biggest fear going into the Dakar rally? My biggest fear was making a mistake early in the rally and not being able to complete it. So unfortunately, I did make a mistake on day two early in the rally. But fortunately, we were able to make the repairs and get back out there. Um, in the years past, they, if you were out, you were just out. So within the last two years, they actually started this class called the experience class. And anybody that could make get back in the regular room, um, entered the experience class the next day. So that's what I was able to do. And so grateful for that, because if I ended the whole rally on day two, I would have been absolutely devastated with how much all of us, you know, the effort that we all put into it. So thank you to Dakar for coming up with that because that enabled me to get back out there and finish the whole rally. That is a really cool thing. What, well, this isn't even a question that came in from our listeners. This is from me. What about those big trucks? Those things look so sick. They are. We had one with our team and um, yeah, they're huge. I was crawling in and out of it before the race got started or the rally got started. And I just, they're massive. They sit three across or two up front and like one centered, you know, just set back a little bit, but they truly could be just three across. No problem. But Did you yeah, get to sit in one? Yeah, I got to sit in ours. I wanted to drive it, but it just never happened. <laughs> does so it look like when you were sitting in it, does it look super gnarly to drive? Yeah, it's because you're kind of like a trash truck, you know, where you're sitting like so far forward and so tall yeah. in it. It's kind of awkward, but they make it through the dunes like, like it's, they're incredible. I can't believe how they just navigate through those dunes and i mean a few of them had some issues here and there with uh, some rollovers but for the most part they just have so much body roll going on and they just make it right through those dunes i had to pass them a couple times that was pretty sketchy <laughs> i was gonna say those things look so crazy um all right so we had a few comments already come in uh jonathan elkins came in and said that the dirt series uh is like motocross on uh for side by sides which is super cool yeah yeah, it's cool. The kids love uh, it. They have so many youth classes there. So like anyone could show up with whatever they have and just race it. And then they have the adults out there too. That's actually Wayne and I had the RS ones in the beginning and we were out there racing them. But then I gifted my RS one to our, our oldest son. <laughs> so now I don't have one, but. Did you like it when you did it? Or was it like not quite as, uh, I don't know, fulfilling as the desert stuff that you're used to? No, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's not a I'm not a time jumper or anything like that because I'm just not used to jumping man-made, you know, like groomed tracks like that. It's just not what I've ever gotten into. But, um, yeah, it was fun, definitely. It's something different. <laughs> Wayne probably loved it, though, because he's all into jumping and, like, moto and quads and stuff. 
Not really. No, he's really? always been a guy. Yeah, no, he's not a jumper at all. And I think that's why I'm not a jumper because he's the one that taught me everything. So he didn't teach me how to jump. It's his fault. Oh man, I totally thought Wayne would be up for that. Uh, let's see, get some photos said. What did you think of the organization and how they ran the, the rally? Oh, well, you kind of answered this before saying it was pretty good. Yeah, they're amazing. Um, yeah, I, I was telling SCORE actually um, that they have an app that every racer downloads ahead of time and they just feed you all the information that you need on a day-to-day -day basis on the app. So that's, that's kind of super cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, any information that you need to know is right there in front of you anytime. So especially with COVID involved, because they weren't, they're trying not to have too many big meetings, you know, with all of us gathered together. So, so that's how they did a lot of their communicating. But I like the fact that if they told you you were starting on a certain second, like the next day, they started you on that second. Like there was, the, you know, they were just on time for, for every event. Dude, that's super cool. That reminds me of like the way that they perform X Games and live TV shows and races like that. I love when like uh, the off-road community or side-by-side -side racing can elevate to that level. It just makes me feel so much happier that there's that much professionalism. Yeah, and safety-wise, a lot of people ask me that question, too. Um, they had 30, at least 30 helicopters out there. So, Whoa! And, yeah, I didn't realize that. I thought it was just, like, the same helicopter coming around here and there, you know, just to check out and see how I was doing. But there's 30 of them. Whenever I went to the bivouac area, checking everything out, I found where the helicopter and they were just lined up in rows and they were all the same blue helicopter. So that's why I thought it was the same one the whole time. They all match. But so, <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. So they have devices in our vehicles so they know like if there's any rollover or um, impact whatsoever. They know exactly how hard we hit. Um, we can talk to them, you know, communicate uh, through the little box, you know, on the dash at any point. So when I did hit hard that one day, um, they were asking me immediately, like, are you okay? Everyone, you know, is everything good? Are you gonna be able to make the repairs and continue on? So, and then within, I would say 15 minutes, the helicopter was there too, to see if I was all good. Dude, that is so cool. Is that anything that you can relay back to the score officials and stuff to be like, hey, we gotta step up our game the next few years? Yeah, I plan on talking to him and just giving him kind of like, debrief on everything that I experienced there and they can take what they want from it. But yeah, there's definitely some cool things that they have, they have going on over there for sure. Well, but they do that organized with that many people involved too. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it depends on the organization and stuff, but that's just cool that you get all that info and you can help out other people with it. Uh, let's see. Haley asked if uh, what's your favorite race that you do? Uh, my favorite one's probably, hmm, I like them all, but the 500's my favorite, the Baja 500, just because it's not too long and it has such a nice variety of terrain in it, you know, because we get to see Pine Forest, um, the coast most of the time, we get, make it over to San Felipe, get to see all those whoops. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like the variety of terrain for the Baja 500 and you get to uh, go into the night. You know, I like racing at night. Yeah, that's good. actually a really good thing, right? Uh, Desert Squadron said, George, did you see the video of the helicopter that hit a camera or the video of one that hit a camera helicopter when it was jumped on a dude? No, I didn't, man. Uh, and Betsy Anderson, 13. Did you see it? I saw the video of it. It was one of those big trucks that um, lifted up on a jump and hit the helicopter that was hovering above him. They're oh, okay. Dude. That's yeah. crazy. A little too close for that one. Yeah, a little too close for comfort here. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, here we go. So we were talking about the Instagram stuff earlier. You're mm -hmm. always so good with your fans. How the heck do you keep up with social media? Not just when you're down there in Dakar, but like all the time. Um, Dakar, I did it all on my own. So I just made sure every night when I went in afterwards, I just stayed on top of everybody's questions. and um, But... Down in Baja, we bring a girl with us. Her name's Christine, and she does all our media. But I always answer all the questions and myself because I want it to be nice and personal. Yeah, and then you can just relay it to her if she needs it or whatever. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, she does all of our videos, um, our daily edits and stuff like that down in Baja that everybody sees. Um, she'll she'll make those for us and post those every day. But then any comments that come in on all of that stuff, I'm the one that personally answers them. Yeah, Johnny Coulter commented in and said she always replies and gives you knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> that's honestly that's like another job in itself so mad kudos to you for being able to do that because holy cow it takes forever yeah it's a lot of work but i appreciate all the comments and honestly um the comments that come through before a race too um in a kind of a selfish way i like reading them all because it pumps me up so much you know it gives me the motivation and like drive to to get out there and, and do my best too it's my yeah. comments on Get you all pumped up, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, especially um, I'll get a lot of women out there, like, cheering me on and, and yeah. the young girls, you know, that I'm trying to to mentor and, and get them to get out there and, and race themselves, you know, some days. So seeing their comments. And um, I just had a girl, actually, that I was able to give her a ride at um, on President's Day weekend when I saw her out in the desert. We just oh. ran into each other and um she actually i was going back through the comments and the first comment that she ever made to me was when i had my um get off at um stage two of dakar i was on there and i was a bit emotional and she had seen that and she was on there and wrote me this awesome like motivational like little message saying you know you got this and and uh, get back out there and that was so cool you know she's only like, 13 years old that is really cool though. Like, and you got to re remember it. Like just, I know you do because you're so involved with your fans and stuff, but everything comes full circle at some point. Yeah. I mean, I just, um, it's something that she's into. She's just getting into racing herself. She wants to get out there and race, I should say, but, um, yeah, her family's always been into the desert and she ran into me, um, just out there with our kids, you know, we were just having fun and riding. We, stop to look at this area out there and she was out there and saw me and she like broke out into tears i couldn't believe she was crying because she was meeting her idol i'm like oh. she is so happy that's so cool it <laughs> makes me kind of get emotional just thinking about that uh, <laughs> yeah. so betsy, yeah. betsy betsy anderson just commented in and said you did a great job uh at the car obviously and touring the bivouac too so you were probably like amped to go see everything because we saw how much you had a smile on your face when you were walking around yeah, I mean, I was enjoying it. And I'm like, you know what, while I'm doing this, I might as well show everybody else out there too. Because I know that in the US, I would say a lot of people don't know a whole lot about Dakar. It's a worldwide yep. event where everybody, you know, I would say, um, you know, some of the other countries are more involved with it already than we are. So yeah, there's a lot of people that had no idea that it even existed until they're on my social media and seeing all of it. And then I got them hooked. <laughs> you know, some, yeah. some people, even some of my girlfriends aren't really into even off road racing. They watched every single story because it was just interesting to them. And, and now they're a fan of off road racing because of it. It's super cool that you did that. Like, I'm telling you, like, that's why I said at the beginning of the show, like, man, it was so, so cool to see all that. Like I was fired up to watch, like, and I got to the last story. I was like, oh, oh, oh. she's got a race now. I got to wait until she's done with the stage to see more. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, well, timing was perfect for us because I was racing while you were sleeping, you know. Yep. So so as far as social media timing goes, I think it was perfect. Uh, let's see here. So uh, entering the bivouac. She never gives up. We already know that, man. She's hardcore, man. She never gives up and she's always prepared. Uh, Brooke Jensen said, oh, hi, my faves. And then uh, you should open a Twitter account. I don't know, dude. I feel like Twitter is so like 2000 and late. Yeah, I just feel like one more thing to have to keep up on too, you know. I've, it's so hard just uh, taking care of Instagram and Facebook all the time. So luckily both of those are linked. Do either of the boys have social media yet? I put them on Instagram and I just kind of post a few things here and there, but mostly just tag them and stuff that I'm posting. So someday whenever they get a hold of their accounts on their own, they'll already have something there and they'll be able to look back and see all those memories too. 
Yeah, totally. I was just wondering if they're like, oh, Instagram's so stupid, Snapchat and TikTok are way better. Because like, I keep hearing people talking about, oh, you get so many reach and so many eyes on TikTok. And I'm like, dude, I can't do it. Like, I can't take on another one. <laughs> I'm the same way. I know. Yeah. And my boys are only nine and 11, so they don't know any of that stuff yet. <laughs> Okay, so uh, John Lewis over at Desert Squadron said, how are they with spectating over there? I've seen some locals on TV, but is it like uh, racing here in the U.S. where there's tons of fans? Yeah, actually, it kind of felt like Baja when we were going through it because you feel like you're in the middle of absolute nowhere, and then all of a sudden there's a group of um, Saudi Arabians <laughs> just hanging out, watching it, and cheering and us camels. on. And camels, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And little kids, oh, did you get to ride a camel? No. Next, that'll give you something to do next year. <laughs> yeah, that'll be your tour around the bivouac on a camel. <laughs> yeah, I was planning on riding a camel on our after the event was over, but I realized once we get back to Jeddah, the big city, that's the camels aren't around there. We have to drive like an hour to go ride one. Oh. I was over. <laughs> you were probably smoked after the whole event. Yeah, the jet lag when I killed me. I had no idea that it would affect me that bad. But it took me a good, I'd say, two weeks to get back on track. Whoa, really? Was, yeah, and you're yeah. in good shape, too. So how was it for everybody else on the team? Same? Same exact way. Yeah, we were, like, when we got back, um, all of us were in bed by, like, one in the afternoon the next day, even after getting up. <laughs> And then we were able to like increase it by a couple hours. So the next day I was literally asleep by 3.30 in the afternoon and then so on. Finally, I got back on track. But um, yeah, Wayne- It takes a while. He was like the only one on the team where he was jump back into it. So. Nice, he was ready to go. Betsy Anderson, thank you, Kristen. See you in Baja. What was the first meal you ate when you got back? Um, and went and- uh, you know what? It should have been Mexican food, but it was hot wings. <laughs> nice. Normally it would be Mexican food, but we actually got our Mexican while we were over there. Not Chili's is like the best Mexican food ever, but it was the best we could get. They had a Chili's yep. in uh, Jetta. So we went there twice, actually, like back to back meals. It was funny. <laughs> Dude, every time I've been overseas, like I'll go over and then you'll be like, uh, well, for instance, I went over to England and to Spain and stuff, and there's Thai food everywhere, right? So like after four or five days, I'm like, just show me a Pizza Hut or like, like what you said, like an Applebee's or a Chili's, and I saw them, and I was like, oh, I'm in heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we killed the chips there. They were so good. We just kept going through baskets and baskets of chips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't know. I think it's Danny Castro. Uh, he says, hi, Kristen. You are so amazing. Greetings from... La Paz, Baja, California. Oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so speaking of Baja, the next race is San Felipe, right? Yep. Yeah, we've on the 10th, I believe, of April. So it's going to be here before we know it. We're going to go down there and do our normal thing and just pre-run the whole week before and and be ready for the, the next weekend. Do you guys have new cars or anything, or is it the same old cars that you raced last year? Um, they're the same cars. Yeah, um, Wayne's going to be building a new car, but it won't be ready in time for Felipe. Hoping for the 500, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Right on. That'll be yeah. fun. So I texted you earlier, I think this weekend or something, and I saw one of your old cars. What was it called? Betty or something like that? Oh, that's Pinky. Yeah. Pinky? Yeah, because it was pink. <laughs> that was so, my very first car. That thing looks sweet though. And then, so one thing that I noticed was the the new owner or the new uh, mechanic that actually uh, gets to work on that car. He showed me that it has a uh, a seat that moves back and forth, like on a motor. And I was so jealous. Yeah, yeah, that's the only way to go, especially when, like me, I'm short, you know. So the guys driving my car around have to be able to scoot the seat back and then with me you know I have to be able to go forward as far as I can <laughs> so yeah it's it's awesome the cool part is, is I put my seat belts in position where I want them like you know tighten them up and then I can just use the actuator to move the seat back and forth and I never have to readjust my seat belts I just come to you know once I buckle in
Yeah, that is actually super cool. I like all that like detail work and all that technology that comes with it. Like, I was just an amateur race uh, race builder, race car builder, but I love seeing one pro what professionals can do. Uh, yeah, maybe... checking out everybody's build because you learn something new with everybody. You know, I guess. Can you got can you give us an inside scoop on something that you learned when you were building those Dakar cars? Um, the Dakar cars were actually fairly simple you know they're they're just um the toughest part was that restriction you know trying to figure out how to make it go as fast as it could go being restricted like that so um yeah i don't there's everything was pretty pretty simple on it um there's a few things i didn't like but a lot of it was just because of the dakar rules you know like the yeah. way that the um uh, the window nets had to come down. They make them go up instead of um, you can't let them drop in, you know, so right. normally like let them drop in and then you just put them up. This one, I kept having to flop up on the roof, you know, and then it would hit me in the face when I get out. <laughs> <trying> to... <laughs> <laughs> Never fails. Right? And you like try to get out and you have to grab onto it and your arm slips and all kinds of crap, right? Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that, like I would never do on my car here, but it's just part of their rules. So you have to follow it. And those massive mud flaps. Yeah, yeah, those, I don't, they're so funny over there because you didn't have to put them down on the highway. You only had what? to put them down at the start of the dirt section. I didn't get that at all, but. Yeah, that's kind of cool. weird, right? Well, yeah, I figured uh, it or highway, I like to protect the other vehicles and their windshields that were passing, but nope. So we're, we're stoked that you guys get to get back to racing this year, at least, I guess, in some sort of normal fashion. What's the biggest race that you're looking forward to this year? Yeah, this year, uh, the Baja 1000 Peninsula run. I'm going to attempt to Iron Woman the Peninsula run for the second time in my racing career. So hoping to do better than I did last time. Last time, I had some mechanical problems that gave me about eight hours of downtime. And I ended up finishing sixth in my class at the end there. And it took 39 hours. It was a long one. Ooh. And so this year I'm hoping to have a clean run and then see how I can do on the, you know, the whole overall. I think it's, it's going to be, be pretty good. The yeah. experiences that you gained, like going to Dakar and stuff like that, I feel like uh, – not that any of the score races are, are easy, but I feel like going to Dakar and experiencing that makes it like a totally different game when you come back and race one of those Mexico races. For sure. Yeah, it definitely toughened me up quite a bit. Um, I didn't think racing that many days in a row would be that big of a deal, but it truly was, you know. Um, I'd prefer to do it Baja style, honestly, just race through it and get done <laughs> you know it's hard finishing a day knowing that you have 11 more days of that ahead of you you know because it was like racing a Baja 500 every single day for 12 days it was that's hard so crazy yeah the anticipation is probably like building too that's just nuts man I'm so pumped for you though I'm glad that you did it <laughs> uh April says get it iron girl and then uh <laughs> Ricardo he says uh he's just saying hi to everybody so hey Ricardo Man, that is so cool. I'm so pumped that we got to catch up. It's already been, it looks like, about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So I want to let you go and, and uh, get back to the family and have some dinner and stuff. So I really appreciate you coming on and catching up with all of us. Yeah, no problem. I have to make it to the track by 7 p.m. tonight. The kids are BMX racing. So Holy They're smokes. Okay, well, we'll let you go <laughs> so you can get over there. Tell uh, the family we said hello. Awesome. Thanks for having me, and see you guys later. Thanks, Kristen. We'll see you how sweet was that man so cool to see Kristen and how she's doing i appreciate all you guys logging on we're gonna get going too. go eat some tacos she got us all pumped up but uh we'll leave you with this forklift to img motorsports we got a packed shop have a good night guys we'll see you later thanks for joining us